Los Angeles, one of the most complex cities in the whole world. This documentary's purpose is to try to summarize its complexity as best as it can. The first chapter needs a different color scheme, so... Oh, it's better! Oh my god, isn't it? Well, the first chapter is history. History of cinematography in Los Angeles. And we'll start history in a very suggestive place. In a graveyard, to be precise. And to be even more precise, at Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Hollywood Hills, California. So let's go. Our first stop is here, at Stella Laurel's grave. Why, you may ask? Well, because he was, as it is written here, a master of comedy. He is one of my favorite actors and a model in my life. And that's why we're here. This is where our journey begins. The first part of this movie is the history of acting in Los Angeles, and especially in Hollywood. There are two photos on Stan Laurel's grave. The first one was a portrait of him in 1920s when he was 30. The second one, though, is more complex because uh, of three factors. Firstly, there's an autograph on it. Secondly, the weird costumes. And thirdly, there was another person with Stan. So, taking it backwardsly, that other person was Stan Laurel's daughter, Lois Laurel and they were on the set of Babes in Toyland, where actually they both played. So that explains the costumes and so on and so forth. The autograph, though, is more weird because no one knows for sure, except for the relatives and for Lois Laurel, because uh, there's the autograph given by Lois Laurel and it says to Bob. And I did my research as a documentary creator and I found out that the only Bob around the family was Robert Stanley Laurel, who was actually Lois's younger brother and the only son of uh, Stan Laurel who unfortunately died only nine days after his birth. So he died of a Chell's disease. And that might explain the autograph. It was a tragic event for both uh, Stan and his daughter, Lois, who was only uh, a small kid back then. Next on, we went to see Stan Laurel star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Well, Hollywood Walk of Fame might not be as you'd expect it to be because lots of stuff are going on there firstly i have to mention the fact that the hollywood boulevard is not in a very good area of los angeles uh, so there are some homeless people that are hanging out there there are also some uh, protests going on there are sellers who try to sell you souvenirs of the stars or the Hollywood sign and so on and so forth and those vending machines that cover the stars which is pretty bad but Stan Laurel star is in a pretty safe spot near the uh, beginning of the Walk of Fame and his stars is actually pretty clean
Besides that, um, I figured it'd be a great idea to see the places where they filmed. Some of them, at least. So I, I searched, I did my research again, and I found out some of the houses where they used to film. And I'm gonna present you the houses and uh, the picture, the original picture, in order to illustrate the differences and how are the houses right now and how they used to be. This is the entrance on the famous street. Well, actually, not so famous. Famous for the people that cared about their movies and kept them in their hearts. So, this is Vera Avenue. And as you can see, as soon as we enter this street, the vibe is totally different. Totally. Houses are older. It's a quiet street. It's quiet. Now we walk towards the house, which is placed near the end of the street. But the walk is worth it. And the house just revealed itself. Small house seemed bigger in many ways, but I guess that's it. Look at it. It's a lovely house, it's really lovely. Goodbye! house is just incredible. You may ask, what else is there related to Lauren Hardy? Well, one very important thing we missed is the man that made them visible. Uh, besides their talents, they needed a producer. And the one that actually came up with the idea of pairing them two was Hal Roach Sr. So I went to see the studios, the Howard Studios, and to my disappointment, well, not actually, because I knew that, but it's still disappointing, the studios aren't there anymore. No, no one stole them, but now there's a shopping center on the studios. The studios were demolished and a shopping center was built, which is pretty sad if you ask me. But I still went there, and there's a plaque that says uh, here used to be the Hallowed Studio, Laugh Factory to the World, or something like that. You will see in a moment, so let's go. And like I usually do, I found it! <laughs> Absolutely found it. Yep! Site of the Hell Roach Studios. Love Factory to the world. 
1919-1963. Oh my gosh, so in 63, the studio was out of business. Wow. And I watched the footage of Al Roach Sr. at the site of Stan Laurel's funeral. He looked really unwell. <laughs> and now, this is a mall. I think this is a shame. It's really a shame. But that's life. New studios were made. Old studios were left apart. That's the house. That's the actual house. They filmed it on the front and then they make made it see in the same house but filmed in a different place. Just after and the neighborhood looked different. One. That's the famous door, the Hudson Place. So tell us a little bit about where we are. So we are here in a very nice neighborhood. This is the Laurel and Hardy Park. And there behind that tree are the stairs where they filmed the music box. Maybe their best appreciated movie because uh, it brought them the Oscars in 1932. So we're heading right now. The park unfortunately is not in a very good condition, but the stairs have changed a lot because back then in 1932 or maybe 31 if they filmed it a year prior there were almost no houses and there were trees and stuff like that and now everything is built 
and it's a really narrow uh, way through. But we'll see in a moment. Also an interesting fact is that uh, when I arrived at these stairs, like seconds ago, uh, the Google Street View car just passed by. And I'll take this as a sign because for the 2024 image of this area, I'll be here next to the stairs, which I think is a great, great thing. Now for the final reveal, these are the stairs. For the connoisseurs, you'll definitely notice that they're really changed. Okay, we're gonna have a challenge. I'm gonna film you. You're gonna go all the way up and come all the way down. Go. Oh my God. How was it? Well, just imagine doing that carrying a music box only to find out that you had an opportunity to go around by car. Hard. It was hard. <laughs> Pardon me, Mr. Postman. Yes, sir. Could you tell me where 1127 Walnut Avenue is? 1127 Walnut Avenue? Yes, sir. That's the house up there, right on top of the stoop. That's the house up there, right on top of the stoop. See what he wants. What do you want? Go down and see what he wants. What? I don't want you. I want that other monkey.
fellas carry that piano all the way up these stairs? You didn't have to do that. You see that road down there? All you had to do. All you had to do was to drive around that road to the top here. Heave! Ho! Heave! Ho! Heave! Heave! Ho! Heave! Ho! Heave! The only thing that remains intact, see? Music box steps. Stan Laurel and Oliver carded the music box, 1932. This plaque marks the site of the making of the music box, winner of the 1932 Academy Award for short subject comedy. The film starred comic legends Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy, who also employed this location in their 1927 film Hats Off. Both films were produced by the Hal Roach Studio. We're here at the other end of the stairs. Yeah, I walked, I climbed, I stepped all that distance. So we're now on Wilshire Boulevard and we're entering the Palm Drive in order to see another house where Stan Laurel used to live. I'm assuming this is the house because that's where it points. Stan Laurel's house from 1928 to 1930 on North Bedford Drive here in Beverly Hills. It's the typical view of the Beverly Hills Street. And we're slowly reaching the second chapter, which requires a change of colors. There you go. Yep, the second chapter is sightseeing in Los Angeles. And what do I mean by that? Well, firstly, the first thing I noticed, I was still in the air. I looked on the window on my right and I said, oh my God, look. That is the river from GTA 5. So what I mean by that is the fact that Los Angeles, even you are a, an actor or not, even you want to become one or not, or a movie star or a... Um, well, you see things. You see places, as we saw in Laurel and Hardy, places where famous movies were filmed. You can see that typical American stuff. And that's also spread in California. California is the most, most concentrated state. How did they find this state? 
how did everything start? Well, firstly, everything was set in New York. And a very famous guy named Thomas Edison stole, literally stole, the idea of cameras from the Lumiere brothers. I'm gonna put on screen uh, the Lumiere house because I went there two years ago. So, Thomas Edison stole the idea from the Lumiere brothers and brought it back to America. And then he wanted to make money on that idea. So not only did he sell the cameras, but in order to shoot anything in New York, you had or around, you had to uh, pay some taxes to Thomas Edison to let you actually film that. That was crazy. So some angry voices said that they have to move. They have to find a different place, great place, great nature, great town, and far, 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 far away from Edison. So they literally went on the opposite side of America. They found California. And the city of Los Angeles back in 1910s was a was about the 10th or the something between the 10th or the 20th uh, largest city in the United States. And then after that, in only, let's say, 20 years after the cinematographers uh, came in and the film industry moved, uh, the city grew to a whopping second place, and now I think is uh, the state has uh, the biggest economy in, uh, in in America. So they moved there. Things evolved really quick, and here we are now, in 2024, when you can go on the streets and see many, many similar or identical places you saw in your favorite movies. Because I think, I take a wild guess, and I think they filmed basically everywhere, on every single street at some point. Because there are lots of and lots of movies that were made, and there are still. So, you have a pretty big chance to see something familiar. So that's the second chapter, and I'm gonna present you some movies and their filming place, more recent movies, and how you can see, even in animated movies, the similarities. So I'll start with none other than Cars. Cars 1. Yep. California, here we come. California, here we come. Dinoco. Here we come. So we're here at Bodhi, aren't we? We're at Bodhi? <coughs> yeah. Bodhi was a, um, a very thriving gold mining town, established in 1859, one of the richest, the richest gold vein in the Eastern Sierras here in California and in Mono County, which is home to the uh, Mono Lake, which is the biggest saltwater lake in California um, that Mark Twain wrote about. This was the most thriving community. 
and it did well until 1942 when uh, Frederick Delano Roosevelt emitted a limiting order because he wanted to discourage the production of gold. That was the gold refinery because he wanted to produce copper for the war effort. So in 1942, this was abandoned. The church, the stores. I think this is the drugstore right here. You can come look in the, in the window. These were all sort of medications and medicines. Yep. So it was abandoned from one day to the next. The post office closed. I guess the courier service, everything closed. And the state took it over and made it a state park. And people come here and they see the biggest ghost town in America. I think this is the biggest ghost town in America. And there's a, the rangers who live there. I think through the year. That's the first one. That's, the, that's where the rangers live. In the winter, this place is pretty much inaccessible. You can only make it out here by snowmobile or helicopter. And the 395, which is the major, the only road that this country road 270 goes to, uh, is often snowed in. Every year it's snowed in for a week or two. Uh, so it's a real act of courage to live here. Um, and it makes me think how hard it was for people to live. Thomas Bodie, who discovered the gold and uh, gave his name to the town, he died within a few months of discovering it, frozen to death out there, bringing uh, supplies back to his men. And they named it, they named the city in his honor after his death. He never lived to see that. And it's, it's quite, quite incredible. You can, uh, you can see the saloon, you can see the bookstore. There's a couple of, the, the school is amazing. And I think they have to see, these are, you know, carts from the 19th century. They all left everything here and the rangers have to take care and uh, upkeep everything. Over the, over the winter, right? Over the winter, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think maybe some of this stuff gets covered. I don't know exactly. I mean, this is these are the original artifacts, the original utilities, the original cars. There's a car right there. You want to maybe go take a look. Yeah, so this was basically the gas station, I think. Actually, I don't think I'm sure of this. this you is have, uh, do you like fridge magnets? Fridge magnets. They have a gift shop. Let's check it out. I'm have, curious. All right, they have other things too. Yeah, I want to see. If I they, like fridge magnets. They, they have, have a sherry here.
This is uh, the world famous animation building, Roy E. Disney building. Um, they, uh, I used to work in this building, and this is where they do all the animation. And it's very difficult to get into, it has extremely tight security.
apart from sightseeing, you can also go to visit museums, you can also visit the Griffith Observatory, you can go for some walks, you can go to the beach, and so on. But regarding the museums, I only chose two, which represent my two biggest passions. Two. Firstly, the Academy Museum. And secondly, Peterson Automotive Museum. So let's go there. The first thing you can see in the Academy Museum is a device used for filming in Star Wars, the first Star Wars, and the model of Millennium Falcon they used. Then in the Oscars room you can uh, observe the um, Moonlight screenplay Academy Award, uh, won by Barry Jenkins and Terrell McCraney. And then the second one is uh, the best directing uh, of Alfonso Cuarón's in Gravity, 2013. Then, of course, we have Shrek, the best animated feature film uh, by Aaron Werner. Then we have uh, the Academy Award for the best foreign language film, Crouching Tiger, a Taiwanese film made in 2000. We also have Bram Stoker's Dracula costume design, We have the best documentary feature by Robert Epstein and Richard Schmichen, uh, The Times of Harvey Milk in 1984. We have an Oscar for sound effect editing for E.T. in 1982. We also have the visual effects for Star Wars, the first one in 1977. The best documentary feature by Barbara Koppel in Harlan County in 1976. We also have the Academy Award for the Best Actor in To Kill a Mockingbird, 1962, won by Gregory Peck. And last but not least, we have the Best Editing Made by Adrian Fazen for the movie GG in 1959. In a very long speech, which I cannot share with you presently because of time, but I will be glad to share with the press afterwards, that he very regretfully cannot accept this very generous award. And the reasons for this being are the treatment of American Indians today by the film industry, excuse me, and on television in movie reruns, and also with recent happenings at Wounded Knee. I beg at this time that I have not intruded upon this evening and that we will, in the future, our hearts and our understandings will meet with love and generosity. Thank you on behalf of Mom Brando.
My mama taught me wrong from right I was born in the south Sometimes I have a big mouth When I see something that I don't like I gotta say it Another thing about Los Angeles, uh, and I think that's how we should end it, uh, is that on my second day, literally, so on my th on my first day, I arrived there and I had an in and out because that's how you do it in California. You'll go to in and out and eat. Uh, but this in the second day, I met two persons that I would have never expected to meet. At least not in my second day of my first trip to America. On my first trip to California, on my first trip to Los Angeles, being just a simple tourist. I went to a movie. I went to see Daddio. And thanks to my uh, internship supervisor, we got invites at this movie, which was uh, projected in the CAA building, one of the biggest casting companies out there. And apparently it was the gala of the movie, the premiere of the gala premiere. And Dakota Johnson and Sean Penn were there in the same room as me. I filmed them, I stayed almost next to them. I breathed the same air as Dakota Johnson and Sean Penn. And if that wasn't enough, my 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 internship supervisor uh, suddenly told me, "Look back, man." I said, "Why? Well, what happened?" And I looked back. Who do I see? Melanie Griffith and Don Johnson. I was like, "Oh my God, what are they doing here?" And then I realized, "Oh, okay, yeah, it's Dakota Johnson, her daughter." Duh, that's what are they doing here? Oh my god. I was shocked. I was literally shocked. And the only the only reason I couldn't get a photo of them is that I've been told that at these type of events everybody knows everybody, so it would be kind of unusual to go and take a picture with someone because you're supposed to know them because you're in the same room with them and you got an invitation. So that's why uh, I have no photos of them. I have a film, or a, a clip where I appear and then in two seconds, Sean Penn is there as well. But that's it. He comes to the door and... Um, delivered by me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I got maybe 10 pages in and I was pretty much seeing that, you know, 60 and over is not bad. Yeah. <laughs> you, uh, you can get gifts. And, and it was really beautifully written and... Uh, I want to dedicate this movie to Stan Laurel because he was one of the greatest actors in the world and the greatest comedian. I know that there is a Hardy in Lower than Hardy, but Stan was the man of the movies. He had the ideas, sometimes he directed them, and even if he didn't, he uh, had ideas that helped the director. For example, James Parrott. 
Hardy was, on the other hand, very talented. He really gave his soul to the movies, but he knew he, he knew his job. He only did his job. For Stan, that was his life, not his job. For for Hardy, he was a great professional. He that was his job. And in his free time, he used to enjoy playing golf while Stan was still thinking of ideas and how to improve the very famous duo. So that's why Stan this is for you. It was fun while it lasted, wasn't it, Stan? Bless all clowns. Give them a long, good life. Make right their way. They're a race apart. I'll come as most. Who turn their heart's pain into a dazzling jest to lift the hearts. God bless all clowns. Smile, though your heart is aching. Smile, even though it's breaking. When there are clouds in the sky, you'll get by if you smile through your fears and sorrows. said that all of us when he took his leave. God bless. Some things in life are bad. They can really make you mad. Other things just make you swear and curse. When you're chewing on life's gristle, that grumble give a whistle and this'll help things turn out for the best and all 
always look on the bright side of life Always look on the light side of life If life seems jolly rotten There's something you've forgotten And that's to laugh and smile and dance and sing When you're feeling in the dumps Don't be silly chumps Just purse your lips and whistle That's the thing hey. Always look on the bright side of life It's quite absurd And death's the final word You must always face the curtain with a bow Forget about your seat Give the audience a grin Enjoy it, it's your last chance and out So always look on the bright side of death Just before you draw your terminal breath a piece of shit when you look at it life's a laugh and death's a joke it's true you'll see it's all a show keep them laughing as you go just remember that the last laugh is on you and always look on the bright side of life always look It's available in the foyer. Some of us got to live as well, you know. I said they'll never make that money back. 